So this issue has been beaning around in my head for a while, so I figured I would start you know, by sharing it. Uh, every project, at least every project I've ever encountered, has like a part of its anatomy that goes like, uh, desired outcome, I guess I'll put an S in parentheses there, an S, <laughs> and a specific method. And the job is to map the desired outcome to the specific method. And in software, once you've got this, you're done. There's no like execution phase after this, it's done. So the question is, how do you do this part? And the answer, uh, I think for software, goes kind of like, I'll take this, make this a little bit more specific and say business goals. And we gotta get these somehow, and we map or intersect the business goals with some user goals. And of course, your user is not necessarily your customer. They could be different, but they are also could be the same. The user is the one you gotta satisfy in order to satisfy the customer, in order to satisfy your business goals. So we proceed down to user tasks. Again, a task is not a goal. A task is what you have to do in order to satisfy or achieve your goal. Then we go from user tasks to system tasks. This is what the system has to do in order to support the user in their task, in order to support their goal, in order to coincide with the business goals. And then we go down here into system behaviors. And these are kind of like the fine grained, uh, you know, prescriptions and proscriptions about what needs to happen and not happen in order for, the, while the system is carrying out its end of the task. And then finally, we have code. Now, I submit that in our race to get here, we forget all about the value and information that's gathered in all of these tasks up here. And I'm gonna footnote that this is not like a step-by-step -step instruction manual. This just ends up shaking out this way. And I think that there's precedent for this um, in uh, Stuart Brand. Shearing layers. He later called them pace layers. Let me think. So he was talking about buildings initially, and uh, in the shearing layers, first formulation, he had sight. So over millennia, there's going to be a lot of different buildings on a particular site. Structure. A building structure could last centuries or millennia too, come to think of it. There's a lot of very old buildings out there. Uh, skin, that's like the building envelope, the shingles, whatever. Uh, services, that's like, you know, the HVAC and escalators, elevators, whatever. Uh, electricity, plumbing, uh, space plan. That's like the interior, like non load bearing walls. And then finally stuff. Furniture, merchandise, the things that actually happen inside the building, the people, whatever. In the generalized version of pace layers, he was sort of 
blew it out to the like society scale and he first came nature, then culture, governance, infrastructure, commerce, it. and finally, fashion. And the sort of hypothesis was that each one of these things kind of lived in its own domain. It's like, the, hence the shearing part. They shear against each other, they're layers, and they operate at different speeds. And so that makes these more or less durable to, time, uh, to changes, secular shifts in, in time. And so what I'm trying to suggest is that we have an analogous thing over here where you've got a business, its goals, you know, make money, whatever, don't change very quickly. The users, well, if the, to the extent that a user relates to a customer, um, you know, or whatever, you know, a product, what have you, you know, products last a really long time within a business. Um, user tasks, well, the general sort of what somebody has to do in order to do that, these also are pretty durable. Um, this starts to like change a little bit with technology, but again, you know, not any particular uh, uh, implementation, you know, dependent. Same thing with this a lot of the time. You know, the things that need to happen and or not happen, like they might be more or less sensitive and they might, you know, pair up with the implementation, but eh, not necessarily. This guy though is disposable. You know, you can cut that off. If you had all this, you could just make another one. That's sort of what I'm trying to say. And this, these don't really exist. And you know, I can give you some examples here. Like, um, you know, in here you could have personas, scenarios, you know, storyboards. sort of like high level architecture, you know, and then uh, you know, fine grained behaviors, whatever. These, uh, and you know, these don't really exist in a sort of unified way. Like how do you traverse like what I have been sort of calling a specificity gradient such that, you know, where is the thing that I can go in an organization and see this whole progression from here all the way down to here in like a intranet or something like that. No, these things are like shotgun blasted all across the organization. They're in PowerPoint decks, they're in, you know, Google Docs, you know, they're in Jira tickets, whatever. And so like, what if, you know, these were all in one place that you could traverse, you know, and these would collect. And like, if something gets obsolete, you hack it off, you make a new one, but you start down here. And the higher up things, you would just add to them. They'd be cumulative. And you could see, you could imagine the structure in some form existing within an organization for decades. You know, it could be there forever. Uh, and, you, you know, you would just be updating it by hacking a piece off and everything down below it uh, and replacing it. You would, and this would just end up getting richer and stronger and, and more interesting. So anybody who's interested in doing this kind of thing, like holler at me because like I am 110% about this and have been for quite some time. In fact, that's where all my nerdy uh, stuff has been going. So yeah, so cheers, you know, enjoy.